Hi, mga cutie! Hi, guys! Hi, everyone! Welcome sa The Dalang Walang Curfew! Usapang hindi na la-lockdown, ito ang... Quaranto! Hey, guys! Happy, happy Friday! Happy Friday! At ngayong araw, ginugunita rin natin ang ating special... It's a special day also, Jules, for mm. um, our brothers and sisters. That's right. It's the start of Ramadan. So, marami tayong mga Muslim friends natin na nag-start na yung kanilang fasting. And it's also very different for everyone. Parang sa mga kapatid natin, Kristano dati nung Holy Week, kakaiba rin kasi walang bisita iglesa. Ngayon na madal start na yung Ramadan, yung sinasabi ng main difference is kapag binibreak down nila yung fast, usually pupunta sila sa mga families nila. Pero right now, of course, hindi pa pwede yun. Mm-mm. That's right. Um, well, to start our show tonight, show talaga, Jules, our live program tonight, mm-hmm. um, we'll dive yes. into some of the latest news today mm-hmm. at maraming mga malaking or significant news ang kailangan natin i-share at um, talagang i-highlight tonight. So, start mm-hmm. with the latest numbers of um, okay. COVID-19 cases, please. Mm-hmm. That's right. So, every... Uh, um, episode natin, we give updates kung ilan na nga ba ang cases. So, ayon po sa DOH, as of April 24, 2020, ang total cases na po natin ay umabot na po, pumalo na po yan sa 7,192 with total deaths na 477 and total recoveries na talagang naungusa na niya ang total deaths which is very good at yan ay 762. At sabi rin ng DOH, eh, talagang paspasa na ang kanilang uh, testing. So, very good yan dahil marami na ang mga available na mga, uh, mas affordable na mga test kits sa mga hospitals ngayon. Yes, I think over, we can now do over 4,000 tests a day. Um, mm-hmm. Alright. Um, also, inanunsyo kaninang umaga ni President Duterte ang extension ng enhanced community quarantine sa That's ilang right? mga lugar dito sa Pilipinas. So, let's start mm-hmm. with a rundown of the places where ECQ remains until May 6 May 15. Tama? Yes, May 15. May 15. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. So ECQ is still in place until May 15 po. Um sa so mm-hmm. Metro Manila, Southern Tagalog or Calabarzon, Central yes. Luzon, Mindanao, uh, Mindoro Island, sorry, Mindoro Island, Pangasinan, Benguet, Catanduanes, Albay, also mm-hmm. in Davao del Norte. Davao City, Antique, Iloilo, Aklan, Capiz, Cebu City, Cebu, and Davao de Oro. Okay? Pero on April 30, by the end of the month, kasi remember, ang initial natin um, ECQ was supposedly until April 14 lang. At na-extend ito mm-hmm. ng April 30. At mm-hmm. kanina, today, um, April 24, inannounce niya itong extension until May 16. Pero right. by um by April 30, i-recheck pa rin, i-revisit pa rin ng um pamahalaan natin kung itutuloy pa o kung ano nang stage mapapasailalim ang mga sumusunod na provinces. So we have Benguet, Pangasinan, Tarlac, Zambales, Antique, Iloilo, Cebu City, Cebu, Dav- and Davao de Oro. So yung ECQ sa mga lugar na yun may change um after April 30. Yeah. Right. So, Pero, bali, eh, kung babalikan natin sa parang, at least for Metro Manila and other places in Luzon, mag to two months tayo naka-lockdown when it ends, if it ends on May 15. Yes. Actually, we're now under day 40 um, of yes. the quarantine, mm-hmm. no? Uh, mm-hmm. Pero bukod dyan, kanina rin, uh, bukod sa enhanced community quarantine, in-announce din ito, another, yung classification na general. General mm-hmm. um, community quarantine, which is different right. yung mga um, factors considered for, for some of the areas uh, in the country. So, maybe we can give a rundown for the GCQ. Right. What is this GCQ? Basically, lahat ng manangaling sa ECQ mag relax ng konti pero hindi sa abruptly uh, magiging normal yung life. Hindi, hindi pa sa yung new normal. So itong GCQ, lahat na may stay home policy pa rin for 0 to 20 years old and 0 to 20 years old and 60 years old and above. So lahat po ng mga kababayan natin na nasa loob ng age groups na yan, bawal po kayong lumabas ng inyong mga bahay pa rin dahil nasa GCQ kayo. And starting May 1 in selected areas, 
subject to rechecking din po yan. Kasi syempre titingnan pa rin kung kumusta po yung status ng COVID numbers sa bawat syudad. So most likely, ganito rin po mangyari sa lahat ng manaka ECQ ngayon. Kapag uh, nag-develop na or gumanda na yung mga numbers, ibig sabihin GCQ, tas unti-unti na tayong pupunta dun sa new normal na tinatawag natin. Mm-mm. Tama. So, Jules, I think that's the main highlight of of the, mm-hmm. of the day, no? Pero, yes. aside from that, meron din tayong tinatawag na mga trending topics, okay? So, yes. here on Current Talk, we also talk about some of the topics we usually discuss online, particularly mm-hmm. on Twitter, on Facebook, mm-hmm. on Instagram, at dahil nga extended yung quarantine mm-hmm. period at ang lockdown for, for most for several places in the country, marami pa rin sa atin ang mananatiling work from home. So, yes. tonight, we'll share some of the tips for those of you who are working from home and are trying to still be productive kahit na meron tayong kinakarap na challenges amid this COVID-19 mm-hmm. pandemic. So, we'll give you a rundown now of the some tips that maybe you can apply. Some yeah. some tips kasi baka hindi applicable sa inyo, but let's see. Sige, and for start. other for our friends Mm-mm. who are watching right now na nag-work at home din, pwede rin po kayo mag-share sa comment section at pwede po yeah, natin yes. siyang i-flash dito. Okay, so simulan na natin, Eya, ito na sa quarantine. So number one, ano bang mahalaga kapag nag-work uh, from home? Okay. Um, sabi dito, marami tayong mga sources, no? Um, pero isa sa mga common um, tip na nakita natin is to get dressed. So kahit na nasa bahay ka lang, you still mm-hmm. get dressed. Mag, magpalit ka pa rin out of your clothes na you usually wear at home. And then also mm-hmm. designate a workspace or home office. Okay, so practically, <laughs> hindi naman lahat ng mga bahay ay pwedeng mag-convert ng home office, na magkaroon bigla mm-hmm. ng home office. So, just designate a workspace kung saan makakapag-focus ka ng maayos sa mga trabaho kailangan mong gawin. Maybe you just need a desk for and to, for you to work on properly. Okay? And then, yes. next is to... Yes, Jules. Mm-hmm. Yes. Number two is to designate a workspace or home office. So, kahit yes. na alam natin na sa bahay naman kayo, as much as possible, kahit... Um, mas, Maayos tingnan yung likuran nyo kahit flat space yan or maganda yung ilaw para mas maging conducive yung meeting ninyo with your peers. Mm-mm. And then, third is to keep clearly defined working hours. So, minsan, iba-iba na yung body clock natin. Pero uh-huh. it also helps. But listen to your body, ha? Pero it sometimes helps to um, stick, stick to a certain schedule. So, if you want to start work at 9 a.m. and end at exactly 6 p.m. and that works mm-hmm. for you, go. And if your work allows you to work at, say, 4 a.m. to 12 noon, mm-hmm. and it works right. for you and your employer or your team, go for it. Basta, mahalaga dyan, meron kasi nasundan na pattern, and it lets your body get into the rhythm also. Alright, next? Next is number four, build transitions into and out of work. So, kung sa usual yun na routine, di ba, nagko-commute kayo, Usually, nakikinig kayo ng music or nagbabasa kayo ng libro or kapag palis na kayo sa office nyo, may mga ginagawa kayong mga ceremonies ninyo, as much as possible daw, gawin nyo pa rin yan kahit nasa home kayo. Makinig muna kayo ng music, uh, magbasa muna kayo ng konting ilang ilang pages ng libro bago kayo sumabak sa work week po para yung feeling nyo ay same pa rin yung routine nyo ng normal day. Mm-mm. Alright. Also, don't get too sucked in by the news, etc. Mm-hmm. I think it you have to be mindful kung ano ang inyong mga trigger points, ano ang mga nakapagpastress sa inyo. At kung yan ay ang news, um, regulate kung kailan lang kayo makikinig or makicheck ng news for the day. Ayan. Mm-hmm. And then next is number six. Communicate, communicate, communicate. That's very important. So, uh, this is a well valid issue rin for some kasi hindi naman lahat merong magandang access sa strong and fast internet. Pero as much as possible, kung hindi nga strong yung internet nyo, at least text your boss na may issues kayong kinakaharap pagdating sa connection or may issues kayong kinakaharap sa personal life nyo mismo. Manari, kung medyo uh, magulo yung isip nyo ngayon, sabihin nyo agad sa boss ninyo or, and sa mga peers ninyo para at least hindi sila mag-expect ng output sa inyo on that day or at that moment at simpala hindi okay yung welfare ninyo. Yes, and then lastly, mm-hmm. 
don't forget to socialize. Okay? So, mm-hmm. don't forget to socialize. Siguro, ano pa yung mga ways na para makapag-socialize tayo? Um, recently, when we launched this show, when we launched this program last Sunday, mm-hmm. we celebrated Jules Kiyang's birthday. So, kahit na naka-ACQ tayong lahat, na pag celebrate pa rin tayo ng birthday, virtually, digitally. Right. So, that's mm-hmm. one way to connect with your friends. Um, mm-hmm. What else? Jules, ikaw, ano, paano ka pa nakikipag-socialize? Um, ganun lang din. <laughs> so, ganito, with this show, so happy na meron tayong ganitong klaseng platform. And sana kayo guys, makanapin kayo ng way to still connect to your friends and to your relatives, of course. Nasaan yes. man sila sa buong mundo. Okay. At remember, okay. pwede pa rin kayong mag-Zoom date, Skype date, at FaceTime dates. Possible mm-hmm. pa rin yan. With friends. Sign kayo, uh, sabay. Uh, uh, with friends, with family, and with whoever you wanna have a date with. Okay, so, yan. Actually, Jules, hindi lang pala talaga tayo dapat yung dalawang nagkakwentuhan ngayon. Mayroon yes, kasi may nag-comment. Ayan, hmm. no? Si Chris Ablan. O, oh, si Asik Chris Ablan yan. Waiting for my segment. Tama po yan, mga cuties. Cuties yes. po ang tawag namin sa inyo dahil uh, quarantock tayo. Waiting for my segment ko si Ase Chris Ablan ng PCOO dahil makakasama natin siya ngayong gabi. Eya, ikaw na mag-introduce yes. sa ating speaker. Yan, kasi nga sa kwentuhan natin tonight, makakasama natin ang isa sa mga nangunguna sa implementasyon ng um, Executive Order on Freedom of Information ng ating pamahalaan. And of course, naging bahagi din siya ng um, iba't ibang ahensya in the government and mm-hmm. sa siyang lawyer at makakasama natin tonight si Ase Chris Ablan. Ay, yes, yes. Two, one, and hello, Ate Chris. <laughs> hello, Hi, uh, Good evening. Happy Friday. Yes. Is... Hindi yes. ko na naman siya na re-renag. So, you have to exit ah, and then I'll be back. Lalabas okay. muna, tapos babalik siya. Tayo muna, Ate, magdaldala dito. Tapos papasok din si Aya oh, mamaya. Na- I can't hear her. Ah, sige. And gagawa po natin yun ang paraan, Ate. Pero, Ate, thank you so much po for ano ah, for joining us tonight. Maraming salamat. So, hindi pa naman bedtime for 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 you po, sir. <laughs> hindi na. Hindi na siya bedtime dahil uh, millennial mm-hmm. ako. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so, pipilit pipi- 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 ko magising sa inyo mm-hmm. para sa audience ninyo sa Quarantalk at saka sa mga mga cutie ninyo. Hello, mga cutie. Uh, hello po. Ayan. Ayan. Eya, Eya, naka naka yung, yung portrait ka. Ay, naka landscape na nakatabing eh. Ayan na, okay na. Narinig mo na kami? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, even as a Chris? Yes, I can I can hear you okay. and to Jules. Perfect. Okay, ayan na. So, as a, uh, we started last ano lang. Kailan pa tayo nag-start? Last Monday lang. Uh, yeah, Monday. Actually Sunday on April 20 and now it's our episode 4. So, we're talking about anything that relates to the lockdown to Anything about the COVID, anything na pwede mag-usapan from the end of the government. So, Eya, uh, yun nga nabagit ni Eya kanina na Assistant Secretary ng PCOO, si Asik Chris Ablan. Ano ba pag-uusapan natin, Eya, ngayong gabi? Ayan, pag-uusapan natin ngayon, syempre, ang importance po ng transparency and this time of pandemic. Marami, mga, mm-hmm. marami tayong mga netizens ang nagtatanong, nag-aabang, nagwa-wonder, naghahanap ng mga tao, ng mga personalities in the government. So, we'll talk about transparency tonight. At siguro, mm-hmm. ASEC, we can also discuss how um, the citizens can participate, yung, yung civic participation natin sa governance, kung paano siya da- mas mapafacilitate ng maayos um, in this time of pandemic. So, yan lang. Yan lang. Doon tayo, doon iinog ang ating pag-uusapan tonight. Okay. Let's shoot the first question. Mm-mm. Okay, ASEC. Transparency. Yeah. Ano nga ba ang transparency? Nako, ang hirap niyan. Parang pang Miss Universe yung tanong niya na. <laughs> in, this, okay, in, this, in this context ng pandemic. Yeah, especially in this context. Ano yung importance ng transparency? Alright. In this context of the quarantine and COVID-19, ang issue ng transparency is money, of course. There is There are literally billions of pesos that Congress has uh, budgeted in order for us to address uh, COVID-19. We're talking mm-hmm. about millions of 
pesos to pro procure the personal protective equipment or PPEs. We're talking mm -hmm. about millions of pesos for procuring the, uh, the test kits to find out if you have COVID-19 or not. And we're also talking about uh, the millions of pesos allocated uh, for social amelioration programs, no? social protection programs. Ito yung tinatawag natin na SAP under DSWD. Meron din tayong CAMP under DOLE at meron tayong pinakabago which is called the Small Business Wage Subsidy or SBWS under the Department of Finance. So this is literally billions of pesos and it's important mm -hmm. for the citizen to find out if the money is going to where it's supposed to be. Mm -mm. So, Asik, paano ba, currently, ano ba yung sistema, supposedly? For example, di ba meron tayong weekly reports from from the president sa kung ano na yung update sa, sa ECQ, expenditures, etc. But um, maybe how, how does it translate to the other branches of the government or even the local government units? Right. So, uh, the office that I come from, which is the Freedom of Information office under the Presidential Communications Operations Office. The way the program works is that a citizen should be able to ask for information from government. But because we're under enhanced community quarantine and FYI receiving officers are not at the offices, we had to suspend. So yun yung difficulty mm. ng FOI. Uh, the act of asking government is suspended now because the persons answering are not at the offices. So we're, we mm. are uh, appealing to the our fellow Filipino citizens na sensya na po at nakasuspend naka po yung ating FOI program. But uh, there are still some agencies that are responding to FOI requests despite uh, the suspension. Specifically, mm -hmm. the Specifically, the Department of Health, the Department of Finance, you can check our website, fi.gov.ph. They're answering questions regarding, uh, F, uh, regarding COVID. Now, to answer or to, to, to continue a uh, mentioned a while ago, the president does report to the people every week under the mm -hmm. Bayanihan to Heal as One Act. He is mandated, he is obligated to report to the Congress of where the money is going every Monday. Uh, and uh, other local governments and national government agencies have to align with that. That's why, Aya and Jules, you will see many transparency initiatives across the national government and even in local government. At PCOO, we have a website. The website is covid19.gov.ph and people can log on to that find out what are the latest issuances, what are the latest programs and activities. And uh, pag procurement-wise, Aya and Jules, meron tayong GPPB and they created a special mm -hmm. microsite for us to find out mm. how the national government is spending money uh, you know, na, na, na allocated. And then we have the DBM also creating a microsite within dbm.gov.ph Look for the open, mm -hmm. open Government Partnership microsite. They already summarized all of the different transparency initiatives of all agencies, Department of Health, the SWD, BOLE, so on and so forth. So ah, great. We, are seeing, we are seeing in the time of COVID-19, government be taking the stance of proactive disclosure. Kami na ang magbibigay sa inyo ng informasyon kasi nga mahirap na kayong magtanong. Mm -hmm. Okay, Asek, nabagit nyo kanina no, na ang Congress, ginawa nila yung job nila para siyempre um, gumawa ng batas para nga ma kapag lagay ng pondo hinggil dito sa COVID-19. So nagawa na nila yung job nila. Ngayon naman, on the LGU level, nabanggit nyo po ito. Papano, ano ba yung duties ng LGUs down to the barangay para mapakita nila sa constituents nila na ito yung pumasok na pera sa amin at ganito namin siya pinapasok? Well, they can adopt the different transparency practices adopted by other local governments. And you've seen, mm. them, you've, you've seen them all over social media. Sa Facebook, you can see na local governments, they print uh, a receipt every time they issue a relief 
uh, goods kung magkano yung delata, magkano yung gas, magkano yung kung ano man yung binigay nila para makita ng tao mm-hmm. na okay, ito talaga yung halaga ng relief book. Ultimo pati mm-hmm. yung presyo ng supot nakalagay doon para alam mm-hmm. ng, mga, ng mga tao. Likewise, may instructions po ang DILG na dapat ipaskill sa conspicuous place yung pangalan ng mga recipients ng uh, SAP o ng social amelioration programs. So yan yung mga mm-hmm. bagay kung saan ang ating mga local government units ay maaring ipakita nila sa ating kababayan na transparent sila during the time of COVID-19. Um, sa currently po, meron pa ba kayong ibang mga measures na tinitingnan or suggestions na natatanggap na um, the government may want to consider uh, to parang kumbaga, strengthen the push for transparency? Kasi I understand marami ng, may mga efforts yung national government. On the LGU, Iba-iba talaga kung paano nila ginagawa yung um, transparency drive nila, kung paano sila mag-service sa kanilang constituents. But maybe you can share with us some best practices maybe that you've seen in some LGUs or suggestions that you're getting um, sa office niyo po. Uh, one suggestion is when when they, they distribute the social amelioration program, yung PERA, uh, Jules and Aya, dapat mm-hmm. nakalagay doon kung saan nanggaling yung PERA. Nanggaling ba siya sa probinsya? Nanggaling ba siya sa city government? Nanggaling ba siya sa barangay? Kasi pag hindi natin alam, kung tanggap lang tayo ng tanggap ng pera at hindi natin alam kung saan nanggaling, maaring maging avenue yan ng korupsyon. And you mm-hmm. might have an instance wherein a local government will take credit for another uh, dole out. And we don't want that. We want every peso that the Congress has allocated be used properly. Um, another is we have suggested with the DBM if we can improve our weekly reports in such a way that they are in open data, machine readable format. Para yung mga data scientists natin magamit nila yung data at makita talaga nila, matrack talaga nila if how we are we are progressing in this fight against this pandemic. So, yun yung mga mm-hmm. ibang suggestions na hopefully in the coming days, dahil nga in-extend ang ECQ sa Metro Manila, uh, the national government and local governments will adopt. We, we will be improving our level of services as long as our citizens like you, Jules and Aya, continue to hold us accountable on social media. No? Uh, call us out on Twitter and on Facebook if you find out na hindi tama yung ginagawa namin so we can make the necessary corrections. Mm-mm. Speaking, okay. ay, Jules, Jules, go ahead. Yeah. As like you mentioned a very important point na may tendency yung ibang mga public servants na take credit nila yung dole out sa nilalabas. Kasi yun nga, from the very start kasi, di ba, yung Congress, sila yung gumawa ng paraan para maipalabas yung pondos down to the grassroots. Pero, may certain mindset kasi iba nating mga public servants and even yung constituents na kapag nanggaling ito doon or lumabas yung pera, let's say, doon sa mga opisal mismo, parang napitik nila yung credit, sila yung pinasasalamatan. So, paano ba natin mabubuwag yung ganitong klaseng mindset, ASEC? Um, Jules, I'm not saying that local government officials are doing this. Ha? I'm just saying mm. that there's an avenue there is an opportunity for them. Hopefully, they don't. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, kung mm-hmm. anong pera ang matagap nila, eh talagang mabigay nila yun sa mga constituents nila. And so, mm-hmm. uh, you know, hopefully, uh, I, I feel that uh, our local government officials, our national government workers, do not take advantage of this pandemic. Right. Kasi nga, mm-hmm. every peso counts. Uh, gaya mm-hmm. ng sinabi ng President kanina, money allocated is not doesn't come from it doesn't it doesn't grow on trees so may mm-hmm. finite siya so may hangganan siya so sana makonsensya naman yung mga al- alam ko naman na daming mababait ng mga public public authors ano lang i just want to remind kasi very thing eh very tempting right um speaking of um the, you actually invited everyone to report or to call out the government kung may mga inconsistencies or 
um siguro points for improvement pa no ang government pero for you po maybe you can give pointers for our viewers ano ba yung mga aspeto na kailangan tinitingnan ng mga mamamayan in terms of um service delivery or expenditure monitoring ano yung mga pwedeng nating tingnan o bantayan as citizens to make sure na maiwasan yung corruption that we keep our leaders accountable uh very basic is whatever a uh, public officer promises, a citizen can validate it on the ground. Kasi kayo naman yung tumatanggap ng ano eh, yung mga uh, ayuda, yung mga assistance. So, for example, sinabi mm-hmm. na, oh, magkakaroon po tayo ng kadag, uh, uh, mas madaming mga test kits. E di pag nakita nyo talaga sa hospital na kulang-kulang, and then can hold our government officials accountable to that. Pag nag-announce si mayor o si governor na magbibigay sila ng mga cash assistance o relief goods at hindi dumating sa barangay nyo, pwede kayo magreklamo sa sa social media para masagot ka. Malay mo, baka mamaya wala ka lang sa schedule o baka taga na iskinip talaga yung barangay mo. So, mga ganun na bagay. Whatever promises made, you are on the ground. Kayo po ang makakasabi kung talagang dumadating yung tulong sa inyo. Yes. Just, okay. yeah. Uh, yeah. Aside from uh, beyond the go- government aspect, siyempre marami ring mga initiatives na nagsulputan from the civil society. And of course, happy tayo dito kasi talagang ito yung spirit ng bayanihan eh. And maraming mga pumapasok na pera rin uh, through donations. So from your end uh, aspect, as a advocate of transparency, ano ba yung dapat na steps na ginagawa ng civil society na tumatanggap ng uh, monetary donations para mas maging transparent sila? doon sa mga nagbibigay. Yes, so uh, every civil society organization or informal group or individual uh, that collects any donations for this COVID-19 response should be transparent by publishing uh, yung pera, na, pera o yung mga gamit na natatanggap niya para makita ng mga tao na okay, this, this is how much that we were able to collect and ito yung mga tribute natin. Uh, of course, meron tayong mga photo ops, Aya and Jules, para makita na hindi naman pala invento talaga siya. And uh, I think those very simple, uh, I think, guidelines, no? uh, by publishing uh, whatever you received and wherever you transferred it to. Kasi, you know, ganun na eh. Mal- Kasi pag di ka publish, baka sabihin, kinupit mo lang yung pera eh. Mm-mm. Accountability din sa mga donors no na at dito na punta ang inyong mga donations. So yan. Right. So ano rin, am um, siguro yung kung may makikita man kayo guys, for our viewers na mga pictures ng nagdo-donate. Sometimes it's not really to brag, but to document mm-hmm. kung saan napupunta yes. ang donations. Oo. Yes. Kasi marami tayong nakikitang mga nag, na mga um, negative comments pa, 'di ba? And reactions kapag may donation drives. But really sometimes it's really just for accountability yes. as a right. form of reporting. Oo. So wag tayong masyadong ma- ma-offend sana, no? <laughs> kapag nakita tayo ng mga ganyan. Pero syempre manatili tayong um mapagmatsyag, <laughs> magbantay sa sa ating mga um sa civil society even not just the government even the private sector diba tingnan din natin yung mga corruption na pwedeng mangyari diyan and of course let's uphold transparency um siguro at this point uh, let we will move on to what citizens can do no in their own capacity kasi dito sa current talk po pinag-uusapan din natin kung ano ang magagawa natin no? ano ang pwedeng mong ambag bilang lagi niyo kaming yeah. tinatanong ano bang ambag mo? So, ngayon, <laughs> ano bang ambag mo? Magtatanungan okay. tayo ng ano bang ambag mo. So, uh, in, in this segment of our, of tonight's show, pag-uusapan natin ng isang initiative no na talagang may ambag naman <laughs> sa pandemic mm-hmm. na ito. Ano so, ba kasi eh, uh, mm-hmm. trending din to sa mga millennials kasi kapag sina- binabato yung anong ambag mo, ang sinasabi nila yung brand ng mga bags nila. Pero siyempre, pabiro lang. Pero ito, ano ang ambag mo? mo? Oh, anong bag mo? Ah, Pero ano ba yung ambag mo? Sa li- Sorry. Yan uh, po yun. Ah, oh, so, <laughs> so, ano yung ambag mo? Kasi di ba minsan kapag ka meron kang sinabing negative, nag-comment ka ng negative, ang isasagot sa'yo, ano bang ambag mo? So, oh, oh. Ito, pag-usapan natin ang mga ambag natin. Okay. okay. Literal na ambag. Ito. Ito yung shoulder. Ano ang bag mo? Parang yes. Dapat... Mm. Ito, yung, ito yung parang pinaka-action, ano eh, call to action call to natin action. dito sa yes. show. Okay. Mm-mm. So, alam nyo ba, sa mga viewers natin, si Asik, 
ay bukod sa kanyang duty as assistant secretary ng PCOO, uh, student leader yan si Asik dati sa UP, naging chair siya sa University Student Council. Kaya talagang nananalantay sa dugo na yung paglilingkod sa bayan. Alam nyo ba na ito... Anak si Aya nun eh. <laughs> Grabe na, case. Oh. Ito, ito, ito. Ayan, uh, ayan. Ang sa-search sa inyong screen, no? Pilipino para sa kapwa Pilipino ngayong panahon ng COVID. Yan ang battle cry ng bagong mm-hmm. initiative ni ASEC na Hating Kapatid. So, it's a pro- sa project na to, just to give everyone an overview before we interview ASEC on this, um, yung mga empleyado daw ng public sector naman ang tumutulong mm-hmm. sa... Um, ibang members or employees in the private sector. So, ayan. Um, Asik, maybe you can tell us more about this initiative. Yeah. Um, um, I thought about this initiative a few weeks ago because uh, we in government continue to receive our salary. And then, yung nasa private sector, no work, no pay, so wala kayong, wala kayong sweldo. So, sabi ko, Kaming nasa government, since meron kaming continuous salary, ano ba naman na mag-ambag tayo at tumulong tayo mm-hmm. sa ating mga private sector na mga counterparts? And so I created this Facebook page. It's on facebook.com forward slash Hating Kapatid Project. So thank you guys for letting me plug this project in your Quarant Talk show. Because we need a lot of donors. We have mm-hmm. more than 400 uh applicants who want to receive uh cash assistance and itong mm-hmm. mga mga kapwa natin Filipino Eya and Jews these are middle income Filipinos and they are mm-hmm. disqualified from receiving any social amelioration program under SAP SAP or under CAMP CAMP and so kawawa naman sila di ba they they are not poor enough for our social protection programs, but they're also feeling the crunch, the yung hira, the, as in, it's mm-hmm. unexpected. Eh. Eh, some of them are pregnant. Some of them are expecting a new baby. Uh, some of them are taking care of their senior citizen parents. Some of them are stranded in Manila at hindi sila nakauwi dahil inabutan sila and they don't have money. And so, the the program the project called on my fellow government workers to share uh, some money to contribute to a kapatid uh, recipient and so far uh, after two weeks, I'm very very happy to share with you Aya and uh, Jules that we were able to raise more than eight hundred thousand pesos already wow and uh, we're able to help almost two hundred Filipino families uh, across the country from Ilocos Norte all the way to Davao. Well, very, ano, nakakatuwa, Asik, na ganun karaming mga kababayan natin ang gusto talaga tumulong para din sa mga nangangailangan ngayon. Pero kanina, before we end, Asik, na check ako sa profile mo, meron kang pinost na magandang narrative na meron kayong isang natulungan recently, recipient sa tapos ngayon naman, giving back naman siya. So ano yung pinakabuong story dito, Asik? Yes, that was a very heartwarming story, Aya and Jules. So we gave out cash assistance to this recipient last week. And I'd like to thank the donors. Anyway, Aya and Jules, while the program started with government workers donating for the private sector, the program has expanded to accept donors even coming from the private sector themselves. Wow, bonga! So, <laughs> madaming mga private sector uh, professionals mm-hmm. na nag-donate sa hating kapatid. So, maraming maraming salamat sa inyong lahat. Anyway, going back to the story, this recipient received the money last week and uh, mm-hmm. this week daw, nakatanggap siya ng pera from his employer. And so, he wanted mm-hmm. to pay it forward and he messaged us on the on the Facebook page and say, I was a recipient last week. I'm, I'm now more financially fluid, may pera na ako, I want to pay it forward and I want to adopt wow. kapatid recipient. So, alam mo yun, nakatanggap siya last week, gumaan na yung buhay niya ngayon, ngayon yung pera, gusto niya nang ibigay sa iba at binigay, at binigay mm-hmm. nga namin sa iba. Uh, so, very happy the first forward. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. 
Alright. Ang gandang story yun, Aya, no? Kasi talagang isa lang to sa napakaraming mga narrative for sure na natatanggap nila. Pero I wanna ask this, Aya, before you... Sorry, sorry hingit lang ako. Kasi, ASEC, ano to, di ba talagang ikaw ang sumasala sa lahat ng mga applications dito. So, you, you said a while ago na more, hundred, uh, more, more, more than 400 applicants ang mga nag-apply. So, 400 stories na applications yung mga nabasa mo. Paano mo na-handle to Kasi stressful na as it is itong quarantine. Ang dami mo ng mga nararamdaman na anxiety. Tapos ngayon, parang pasanin mo pa itong 400 na mga umaasa ng tulong. So paano mo ina-handle yung mga, yung mga application na yan, ate? Uh, hindi ko alam, Jules. Umiiyak ako every night pagkatapos kong basahin yung mga storya nila. Kasi it's really... Hindi mo ma-realize talaga how this COVID-19 is affecting our fellow Filipinos. Uh, you know, we're comfortable at our homes right now. And yet, there are thousands of Filipinos out there unsure of where to get their money. Kasi hindi ko na-realize, Jules and Aya, that a lot of us are actually very dependent on our monthly salaries. And we have mm-hmm. sobrang dami nating gastusin, Aya and Jules, na there's not enough even to save. And so, with this no work, no pay, it really cripples a lot of Filipino families' livelihoods. So, it's difficult. It's difficult to read the 400 stories. Uh, and, you know, it just drives me to find a donor to help them, to let them get by. Uh, baka hindi ako makatulog, Jules and Aya, pag hindi, ako naka, pag hindi ko sila nahanap ng, ng, ng ating kapatid na donor. So, it's difficult, pero we have... We have to help each other. No? Sabi nga ng batas, diba? Bayanihan heal as one. We have to work together to rise from this pandemic. Yes, so speaking of that, no, um, maybe as you can tell our viewers, share with us kung paano kami makakatulong, paano kami makakapag-ambag sa initiative na to para naman matulungan ka rin namin dun sa over 400 applicants na um, nangailangan talaga ng tulong. So how can we be part of this initiative? Thanks, Aya. Um, actually, 400 plus na yung nag-apply, pero almost 200 na yung nabigyan ng ayuda. So, I'm down to around 220 to go. So, if you want mm-hmm. to donate, any amount is appreciated. Our goal is to uh, raise 5,000 pesos per Filipino family uh, because that is the social amelioration program subsidy base rate. And we want to we we want to uh, raise that money, but any amount is appreciated. Meron po nag donate ng fifty pesos, may nag donate po ng five hundred, one thousand, may nag donate pa nga ng ten thousand pesos. Any amount is appreciated. Please uh, find us on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash Hating Kapatid. Send us a message if you want to donate money. We'll send you the details of the goes to the Hating Kapatid program. No money goes to me. It Okay. Uh, him, the telephone uh, and then kayang mag mag pass a yeah, I think okay. no, what what Asik is saying is that meron din talaga, makikita nyo rin sa page naman, yung updates mm-hmm. din, kung saan napupunta yung mga do- donations na natatanggap through Hating Kapatid Initiative. Jules, you're gonna add something? Yeah, uh, Asik, um, medyo mahina ata yung connection na yun. Pero can you hear us, Asik, right now? I can hear Okay. Okay, as a, as a way forward for Hating Kapatid, kasi yung nga po, uh, uncertain kung hanggang kailan itong, at least yung ECQ, alam natin hanggang B15 sa at the moment. Pero since COVID nga nandyan siya, sabi nga ni Presidente kanina, hindi matatapos itong laban sa COVID so long as wala pa tayong um, vaccine na, na present ngayon. So since hindi pa nga po certain kung hanggang kailan itong COVID na to, paano po ang way forward ninyo para sa Hating Kapatid? Do you plan to... Uh, expand this program or papatagalin nyo po po ba siya? Um, I'm, I'm uh, thinking of coming up with a new pro- project, Aya and Jules. And this is, uh, uh, bibigyan ko na kayo ng advanced advertisements. I'm gonna call it the Q-Task Project. Madami Wee! na tayo Q-Task. Q-task. Quarantine task and quick task. 
uh, a, 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 okay. I've, I've received a lot of messages that uh, there are Filipinos na hindi nila matanggap ang humingi ng tulong. Gusto nila, I am a professional, I am a graphic artist, I am a musician, mm. I want to offer my services. And so, we're gonna come up with a quarantine job market. Ang nice. Um, hindi, kasi minsan yung mga iba, ayaw nila ng dole out eh. They, they really want to work uh, for the for the money. And so, they just mm-hmm. need an avenue for them to find, uh, you know, project. So, that that's that's the moving forward. I'm I'm trying to find a donor for all hating kapatids in that project. Uh, but I I want I want to end it this month. Uh, pero may, may trickle over yan to May. Pero hopefully by next week we can launch QTask. Exciting. I'm personally excited, no? Kasi marami din tayo mga kilalang freelancers. Meron yes. Mm-hmm. Mga, um, pero totoo yun, yung payday to payday lang din yung income na na-disrupt because of the ECQ and all these changes happening. Siguro, before we wrap up, ASEC, um, maybe you can share some observations or take away during this pandemic as your parting words, maybe? Um, yeah. Well, uh, this pandemic is really uh, uh, affecting all of us, no? More, more than we expected. Uh, we... The, the social amelioration programs really target the poor kasi sila talaga ang pinaka-vulnerable. But this COVID-19 shows that every one of us is vulnerable. And I'm very hopeful that in the coming days, we will be able to realign our budget and focus our attention to those that are in the middle income class. Kasi kawawa din naman sila, apektado rin sila. So I'm very hopeful that government will be able to realign its budget to address the others. So, all yeah. right. And Thank you so much. Let's all yeah. pray uh, that we, we will find a vaccine for this so that we can go back mm-hmm. to our normal lives uh, because I don't think I can keep up with ECQ <laughs> anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having that in the summer, guys. No? So, you know, I, I miss going outdoors. So, you know, let's just pray mm-hmm. every night. Okay, thank you so much. Nakasama po natin si Ase Chris Ablan mula sa PCOO. Maraming salamat po, Ase, at sa lahat ng mga viewers natin. Kung meron kayong mga... Kung advocate kayo ng transparency at ng freedom of information, kumatok lamang kayo sa kanilang Facebook page dahil willing na willing sila makapagtrabaho sa civil society. Thank you, Asek. Salamat po. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, Juice. Mm. Good night. Good okay, night po. Good night po. Okay, ayan, ayan, nakakatuwa yung discussion natin with uh, Ase Chris Ablan kasi talagang um, parang two hats yung suot niya ngayon eh. Of course, as a assistant secretary from PCOO, pero hindi niya nilimitahan yung sarili niya bilang isang government uh, official. Talagang yung puso niya to serve sa civil society, ginawa niya pa rin through ating kapatid. Yes, ako yung pinaka... Nag, um na surprise ako at natutuwa ako na may nakapansin doon sa gap na mm-hmm. um, ayuda na binibigay natin but at the same time yung middle class na pag-iiwanan di ba sa atin mm-hmm. niya sa advocates for sustainable development lagi natin sinasabi leave no one behind ay yes. so masaya tayo na mayro mga katulad ni Asek na nakapansin naman nung mga gaps na yon and in their own capacity gumagawa ng paraan para makaambag, makapag-ambag sa pag-solve um, ng mga ganitong issue. So yun, sana kayo din or fellow cuties out there mm-hmm. na nanonood sa atin, um, let's also try to explore kung paano rin tayo makapag-ambag in our own ways, in our own cap- uh, within our capacities no sa mga ganitong um, panahon. Ayan. So maraming salamat mm-hmm. for joining us tonight. And it's a Friday night, so wala tayong yes. Friday night out. Oh, yes, Pero talaga. naman Pero tayo. Pero doon na, na it's our first week, Aya, and ganito natin sa spin, di ba, through the quarantine talk. It's our first weekend naman in the next coming weeks. Tuloy-tuloy po natin ito gagawin, even after the lockdown. Promise po namin yan, tuloy-tuloy namin ito gagawin. Pero ito yung show namin. Tuloy-tuloy ang show natin hanggang May 15 dahil nasa quarantine oh. pa rin tayo. So, yeah. So far, okay. we mm-hmm. <laughs> Maraming maraming salamat and we look forward to that new project that um, Asik mm-hmm. Chris um, shared with Maganda us. Maganda yun, ha? Sobrang ganda yun, Aya. Kasi ang, ang sabi ko nga kay Asik, yung ating kapatid niya, parang siyang Tinder or Bumble. 
Pero, yeah, match. para sa mag- nagmamatch siya, kung sino mga pwedeng tulungan. Ngayon naman, para sa dub street yung gagawin niya. Pero in the context of uh, quarantine, kasi yun nga, paano yung mga artists natin? Diba? Paano yung mga performers natin? Paano, paano yung kita nila, given na minsan through performances, through events sila kumikita? So, magandang yeah. naisip yung project Mm-mm. na yun. Ayan, kaya talaga naniniwala ko sa creativity at sa taba ng mga utak nating mga Filipinos and our friends also um, that we can um, find solutions no? if we observe enough and we try to see um, kung ano meron tayo na pwede nating i-contribute. Meron, meron yan. Naniniwala ko meron yan. Kaya, mm-hmm. kaya naman, um, magkita kita tayo ulit on Monday at maybe on Monday we will feature another new idea an innovation maybe Um, in response to this COVID-19 pandemic. So, kita-kita ulit tayo dito sa daldalang walang curfew. At usapang hindi nalalockdown, ito ang Quarantine. Quarantine. Mm. So, live po tayo sa Facebook once again, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 11pm. Yes, and follow us on Facebook. That's facebook.com forward slash Quarantine online. Yay. Yeah. Once again, ako po si Jules Giang. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. That's at Jules Giang. Yes, and connect with me on Twitter. That's at Ea underscore Antonio. And on Instagram, at Ea Antonio. So see you Thank you so Monday. much, guys. Thank you. Good night. Happy Friday. Happy weekend. Happy Friday. Bye, Ea. Good night. Bye.